Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome you to the Kaijin Digital Insights webinar on Human Somatic Mutation Database, harnessing insight from real-world oncology cases and Kaijin knowledge to annotate variants and assess prevalence, introducing a new somatic database, our best-kept secret. My name is Mega Balanaru, and I'll be your host and moderator for today. During the presentation, please use the Ask a Question box on the right of the slide window to post your questions to our speaker and Kaijin experts, which will then be answered throughout the session. We will also have a Q&A at the end of the presentation. Please also check out our resources section for important links. With that, I would like to introduce our speaker for today, Dr. Biara Litzenberger. Biara is the Global Product Director of Oncology for Clinical Decision Support Software and Interpretation Services at Kaijin. Prior to joining the Kaijin team, Biata led clinical decision support and interpretation of patient cases for several next-generation sequencing protocols at MD Anderson Cancer Center. Biata earned her PhD in molecular genetics from the University of Aachen in Germany and was a National Cancer Institute supported postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Clinical Cancer Prevention at MD Anderson Cancer Center. And now I will hand the presentation over to Biara. Thank you. Thank you so much for the nice introduction and thank you all for attending today. Kaijan's curated knowledge can be used for many purposes. <clears throat> However, we have particularly deep curation in the area of cancer research. As you know, cancer is a disease caused by mutations. While the majority of cancer is caused by spontaneous or somatic mutations, many cancer-relevant or cancer-associated variants can also be inherited. To understand the complexity of cancer genetics and the oncogenic potential of a mutation, a resource is needed that covers both types of mutations and HSMD fulfills that need. Datasets such as a TCGA or ICGC provides opportunities to identify causative variants underlying human cancers. However, most of the somatic mutations do not have a noticeable effect and are so-called VOSs. The prevalence of VOSs in a cancer sample hamper the distinguishing of cancer-causing driver mutations. Many approaches and databases have been developed to prioritize cancer driver mutations. Most of these tools can be classified into three categories based on three basic principles. Frequency-based methods, which consist of identifying mutated mutations that are more frequently muted than the background mutation rate. While this method is an essential step at, ad at identifying driver mutations, as a standalone measure, it is not sufficient and can be confounded by the fact that mutations can generally occur with a high frequency in the general population. The second principle is based on computational algorithms that have been developed to predict whether a mutation is deleterious or pathogenic based on concepts including evolutionary conversation, conservation, structural constraints, <clears throat> and the physio physiochemical attributes of amino acids. But cancer driver mutations predicted by these computational methods lack consistencies and are prone to false positives or negatives. The third method is purely manual research by subject matter experts sifting through the literature to find publications that describe statistically powered experiments that decipher the biological, clinical, or disease relevance of a mutation. This is an unsustainable, laborious effect that is not scalable. Over the last years, many tools such as OngoKB by Cancer Genome or Jackson CKB have been developed to deposit curated variants with evidence-based information about clinical somatic mutations into a database. However, they have limited number of variants some of them 
less than 10,000 mutations have been annotated towards its biological, clinical, or disease relevance. As a scientist, keeping pace with new discoveries is a serious bottleneck. And I hope this picture literally speaks to the problem that we face as scientists, is that valuable information can go undetected due to inadequate data mining and variant interpretation mechanisms. While mutation and gene prevalence remain one of the measures to identify driver mutations, it is important to use different genomic oncology data sets to calculate frequency data depending on the goal of your research study. Now, HSMD is powered by the Kyogen's Aggregated Genomic Knowledge Base. Since more than 20 years, Kyogen's subject matter experts and ontology engineers have been using sophisticated curation tools and ontologies to transform unstructured genomic and cancer-related literature into machine-readable units with semantic consistency. The aggregated structured genomic and cancer-related knowledge comprises of biological, phenotypic, therapeutic, and outcome data that can be used to understand the genetics of a disease, review available therapeutic options, decide on experimental strategy, or use this data as part of accelerating a drug development program. So how does Kaijun transform unstructured data into computable units? This is accomplished through a unique knowledge-based model. Expert curators, which are PhD and MD level, read the scientific literature, including figures, tables, and supplementary information, and use rigid curation protocols to add each relationship, such as an alteration, clinical effect, drug disease association, into a structured format in the knowledge base. Now, we can use these relationships and units to compute the functional impact and actionability for each variant and display variant and disease-specific information in HSMD. In addition, we use NLG processing to return in a human readable sentence the essence of an experiment, for example, a functional study or a clinical trial result from a paper. <clears throat> The Kaiju knowledge base model allows us to answer unexpected questions because the database can, can transverse indirect relationships, build new relationships, and can find unexpected connections. For simplicity, the most relevant interconnected aspects that can be explored in HSMD are shown here. This data set is genomically described by RAFSEQ and ensemble transcripts and is currently available in Genome Build 37. The clinical oncology data set comprises of over 300,000 de-identified patient cases and we capture age and gender of a patient. The interconnections between a variant, the tumor type, and investigational or approved drugs allows us allows the user to explore therapeutic relations. The mutation has been characterized by four measures. Actionability classification according to the AMP ASCO CAP guidelines, an activation type, a molecular function summary, population impact, and biochemical impact. All relations are backed up by references for the user to transparently review the evidence. So what are the sources that establish those relationships and how many relationships can be assessed through HSMD? <clears throat> As of today, HSMD contains over nearly 3 million curated alteration findings. This number goes up during weekly updates. The data within HSMD is derived from a combination of information from the Kaiju knowledge base, observed clinical cases, as well as public databases 
used to annotate variants. These resources are combined to bring a wealth of usable, trustworthy information regarding the biological, clinical, and the disease relevance of an alteration to view. Again, this information comes with appropriate citations for transparency. transparency. <clears throat> now, currently, the curated data characterizes over a million unique variants encompassing 1,400 different genes and nearly 11,000 cancer types, subtypes, and hereditary cancer syndromes. Now, I want to um, talk a little bit about the observed clinical case data set. How is this cl clinical data set derived? For more than a decade, Kaijin's professional interpretation team, consisting of PhD-level scientists, as well as a team of collaborating oncologists, have been researching and interpreting somatic variants reported in cancer patients. This clinical observed NGS data is derived from a number of clinical testing labs using a var variety of different sequencing panels. The manual variant interpretation includes the activation type, written out reference supported molecular function statements, and actionability according to the um, ASCO-CAP guidelines. The range of tumor types includes solid tumors, lymphomas, and hematological malignancies. This data set is constantly growing and will add about 70,000 new cancer profiles annually into HSMD, including 60,000 new curated variants. Within oncology, a number of different aggregators publicly or privately have emerged and each of the data sets has its own strengths and limitations. Some data sets may be larger than others, but lack a biological or clinical annotation. Other data sets may be biased towards a certain disease. So in some cases, combining data sets together can reveal novel insights. As an example, how does the HSMD data set differentiate from TCGA? Now, it is important to recognize that the Kaijin data set has a larger sample size. It is more diverse and reflects a patient population that tend to be post-treatment. The TCGA data set contains a huge number of variants noticeably due to BOSs and polymorphisms, whereas in contrast, HSMD's data set contains more than 260,000 unique variants, primarily enriched for presumed clinically relevant mutations. So if you ask the question, what are potential acquired resistance mutation that may occur due to extensive treatment, you will likely not find the answer using TCGA where the dominant samples were derived from treatment-naive cancer patients. What I'm trying to illustrate is that it is important to recognize that characteristics of the data set, that, that, that the characteristics of the data set <coughs> should be used optimally to answer scientific questions. Now this graphic represents the number of cases tested for each of the genes comprising HSMD's data set in blue compared to COSMIC's sample coverage from their targeted screen data, which is in red. HSMD contains a large number of cases tested for each gene, providing a mean for a robust and confident assessment of gene and variant prevalence from clinical derived cancer cases. How can you access HSMD? In its first version that we're releasing, the Kaijin Oncology data set can be accessed via a searchable interface. The interface allows for flexible searches by a specific term, such as a variant, gene, drug, or disease, 
or searches across the data set. So let's dive into the application and within the next 10 to 15 minutes, I will walk you through some of many use cases HSMD can answer. This screenshot represents an interface of our Gene Explorer, which allows for exploring and prioritizing a list of genes with specific attributes that are listed within each column. The colored bars visualize the overall genetic characteristic of a gene based on the curated mutations within each gene shown in a third column. For example, the functional column in the middle shows the proportion of mutations in each gene which contains known functional impact classifications. Hovering over each colored bar will show the details of the distribution that makes up the, the genetic characteristics of each gene. All data in HSMD is hyperlinked for you to dive deeper into a gene, variant, drug, trial, or disease, and respective references. So what can you do with this information? If an oncogene or tumor suppressor status is not established, one can predict a potential status based on the general composition of the alteration types, activation status, and tier classification. <clears throat> one can also filter and sort this data set to prioritize a list of genes that are known tumor suppressor or oncogenes with known functionally impactful mutations and are clinically relevant. One can derive a list of genes that contain mutu mutations that cause, for example, splicing defects, or prioritize based on known functional impact classifications. One can also ask which genes on my panel are actionable, or which oncogenes are targeted with the most or least drugs. The Variant Explorer allows you to explore and prioritize a list of variants with specific attributes. Each variant is described with its <clears throat> impact, function, actionability, with how many diseases it is associated, and how many associations from the literature are available for each variant. The columns allow you to identify if we have seen this variant in our real world oncology data set, and that's in the last column called clinically observed, or if it's derived from our knowledge base through literature curation. One can interrogate the variants by asking questions such as, What are the missense mutations with a known biological or clinical relevance that have been clinically observed? Or, which biological relevant mutations have associated therapies or trials? Which biological relevance are emerging biomarkers without associated therapies? Which variants have been most or least characterized in the literature? And among those variants that are VOSs, which ones associate with a lot of literature. The Alteration Explorer also provides the mean to search on a codon position to identify how many variants we have observed at the location, how they were classified, and if we have seen them in our clinical data set or in our Kaijin knowledge base by proactively curating the literature. You can explore HSMD from a disease perspective as well. For example, you could ask the questions, which diseases are commonly mutated by a specific gene? Which cancer types have we observed in our clinical data set that are not associated with clinical trials or drugs? Or what are the diseases that have been associated with the most or least variants? Now, I will take an example of a gene called BTK, Brutantarensin kinase, to walk you through the specific gene and variant content in HSMD. 
First of all, the left side contains headers that serve as navigation pane and allows you to easily and quickly navigate through the gene or variant content. The gene summary allows you to quickly understand its function and if somatic or germ mutations have been associated with a hereditary syndrome or solid or hematological malignancy. Various link-outs exist to other databases, such as ingenuity pathway analysis, to understand in which pathway this gene is located. The subsequent section provides an overview of the alteration types and functional impact distributions within a gene. You can easily find out what are the known activating mutations by clicking on the number, which then navigates you to the alteration section, who then displays those nine mutations that are known to be activating. Alternatively, you can ask the question, what, are, what, what kind of alteration types are frequently observed such as uh, missense, nonsense, uh, indults, etc. <clears throat> and among a specific alteration type, here in this example, missense mutations, how many are known to be activating or predicted activating? The alteration section will automatically display just missense mutation and filtering capabilities allow you to select only activating or predicting activating mutations. And in this example, you can see that um, we have identified 400 activating or predicted activating mutations in BTK. But what are really the affected codons in a gene of interest at which mutations occur? Are there any hotspots? HSMD displays a lollipop graphic that allows you to identify where in the gene and how often we have observed clinical cases with a specific mutation at that codon. And then when hovering over the lollipop, you can determine the amino acid position for this hotspot. Now you may want to review in which diseases is BTK predominantly mutated in this example, CLL and CLL SLL is showing up as the top disease frequently mutated. If you don't see your disease in the top 10 on the screen, you can either use the arrows to navigate through those 34 diseases in which Kaijan has observed this gene to be mutated in. Alternatively, you can use the search box or sort a table by the represented columns to answer additional questions such as how many cases in each disease were tested for this gene. Now for a particular disease of interest such as CLL, it is important to understand the overall mutational landscape of this disease. This is the disease page for CLL. The disease page provides detailed information about the disease and several sections shown here on the left. The gene prevalence in this particular disease is described in the gene distribution section, allowing you to understand what are the top mutated genes, alteration types, and variants in this disease. After determining now that BTK, if we go back to our example, is not one of the top 10 mutated genes, you may be wondering how actionable it actually is this gene. What are really the most clinically significant mutations within BTK? HSMB provides for each variant an actionability classification based on the AMP guidelines, which determines the therapeutic prognostic or diagnostic importance of a variant. We can then plot the actionability across the different alteration types in this gene. And this graphic here provides an overall assessment how actionable a gene is 
if it is rather an emerging gene or if the actuality is driven by a small or large number of variants in a specific alteration type. Now, there are nine mutations that stand out to be clinically relevant. And these nine mutations all occur on the same codon that we have previously identified as hotspot in this gene. Now, if those variants are clinically relevant, are they actually targeted drugs that, uh, that can be used? Or do those variants cause resistance to drug? The drug section provides a list of drugs, its targets, and a therapeutic response related to a specific disease. The information you will find in this case of BTK is that there are three drugs that are approved by an agency, FDA, um, EMA, as well as the PMDA, um, that, that, uh, that target BTK. However, the specific hotspot at code 41 causes resistance to PPK inhibitors identified in a variety of diseases. I mentioned that each relationship is associated with a references. And if you use the drop down next to each drug, you will find the relevant papers and a summary statement to support this relationship. Now, if we want to know more about um, a particular mutation to understand what is the biological Im impact and how frequently is the specific variant really observed, you can dive into a variant page. For each mutation, HSMD organized the detailed information about the variant in several sections shown on the left. The description is an expertly written summary of the molecular function backed up by hyperlinked references for your review. What you can find out in this case is that BTK mutations that cause resistance, um, cause resistance at this residue C481, and it is a residue that is a binding site for BTK inhibitors. And if it's mutated, decreases the binding of those BTK inhibitors. HSMD displays the detailed genomic description where this mutation is located and its nomenclature based on different RefSeq and ensemble transcripts. Now, alternatively, HSMD allows you also to identify and confidently distinguish variants of uncertain significance from those that may have clinical relevance. So, in this case of this uh, second BTK mutation that I'm showing here on the screen, our variant scientist experts did a targeted curation of this variant and specifically researched the literature and database sources and determined an unknown impact. Many cancer-associated variants have been primarily studied in a hereditary cancer or inherited disease context. HSMD provides comprehensive literature coverage about a variant, including literature related to hereditary cancers, or inherit diseases that could be that could shed a light into a potential role in cancer. In this example, we have a clinically observed BTK mutation. However, a role in cancer has not been established yet, but it has been rather associated with an X-linked a gamma globulinemia um, disease in humans. If you're not familiar with this specific hereditary disorder, you can research the variant bibliography for articles describing this mutation in association with the syndrome and hypothesize a potential role of this mutation in tumor genesis. Now, 
Going back to the example of the C481 hotspot, you may want to ask what is the most prevalent disease in which this mutation has been observed. Data can be reviewed in the observed clinical case distribution section. Additionally, disease associations can also be derived by searching through the bibliography to find additional relationships. So how does HSMD characterize rare variants with early clinical and or preclinical actionability information? This here is a tier two variant, which means it is potentially clinically relevant mutation. It has been described as a known activating mutation and the description typically describes early results or case studies with a potential response. The fact that this is a rare mutation is supported by the frequency calculations from our data set. Within the drug section, case studies um, are captured that describe the treatment outcome of a specific cancer type harboring this mutation. However, what you can see here is that for this mutation, it is not established that the mutation sensitizes the tumor to this drug. But this is exactly being investigated and tested right now in clinical trials for lymphoma, plasma cell, myeloma, and solid tumors. Now, HSMD can also link directly to external databases and incorporates population frequency data from NOMAD, which can be transparently reviewed to determine if a polymorphism is predominantly present in a specific population. Likewise, the variant page displays a variety of prediction tools, which may be used as supporting evidence to evaluate a biological role of a mutation. Separately from uh, understanding a gene or variant um, involvement in cancer, HSMD contains a clinical trial portal that allows you to search globally clinical trials based on specific search criteria, such as a gene, a phase recruitment status, a specific drug, country, or city range. Each trial record, if you click on the record, describes the trial details, its location, and um, eligible alterations, drugs, and diseases. Now, um, in cases you want to understand more about the drug itself that's being investigated, its general development status, you'll be able to um, click on the drug, and from the drug page, you can derive the development status, um, grant names, synonyms, and also different drug targets, um, and, and potential clinical trials where this drug is involved in. In summary, HSMD contains a comprehensive oncology data set that gives you access to a rapidly growing real-world oncology data set and structured curated evidence. The content is updated weekly to cope with the increasing number of variants, literature sources, and changing clinical relevance. The first version of HSMD will be developed in an easily accessible user interface. I hope that with the use cases today, I could show you that HSMD allows you to spot key mutations with driving properties or clinical relevance, that the comprehensive aggregation of structured content can bring valuable scientific information to your attention that can be used to accelerate new discoveries or new drug development programs and to interpret confidently clinically relevant mutations. Kaijun has been curating and organizing clinical data for decades, and we would be very happy to be your partner
by providing access to our high-quality, trustworthy, updated, and comprehensive content in a way that suits your individual needs. Please visit our websites to request a free trial access. Thank you so much for your attention and time today. Thank you for that informative presentation, Biara. With that, let's straight away jump into Q&A. I see a lot of questions coming. Our first question here is, have you calculated co-occurring genes and variants, and is that, is that data available in HSMD? We have done internally our calculations, uh, especially on co-occurring genes. Um, however, we have not yet implemented the results of this analysis within HSMD. Okay. How often is this database updated? Yeah, I mentioned that initially in my slides. So HSMD variant curation content is updated weekly. Um, the clinical case data set um, and externally incorporated databases such as NOMAD or HM HGMD are updated quarterly. And within HSMD, we do expect to add about 5,000 new curated mutations per month and about 70,000 clinical cases annually. Will this data be available in GR38? So the initial version um, was built um, based on a genome build 37. Um, we plan to lift it over to uh, GR38 next year um, for your use. Okay. Um, let's see. Will this data set be available as download? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, the initial version is an online version. Our plans are to expose our content through the API next year. If uh, people need early access, um, we do have a solution through services for um, select customers. Um, next question is, you mentioned that HSMD is updated weekly. How do you ensure that the content is up to date? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so um, our content curation team um, has nightly sophisticated queries um, that are run on PubMed um, uh, guidelines and labels. And this identifies a set of new articles or references, which are then further processed through a screening process, and um, which may eventually end up in the task list list of a curator who then categorizes the article, such as a treatment study or functional study or review. And then depending on the broad category, whilst this to a subject matter experts to curate relevant information, um, all variants um, that have been clinically observed at least twice over the last year will undergo a deep review process to gather the latest evidence to decide if the activation type, the molecular function summary, and actionability is up to date. We have some time left to take a few more questions. Um, the next question is, do you use ML and crowdsource data for variant curation? Um, the answer to crowdsource data is no. Um, we only uh, have our internal curation team that will uh, curate information um, according to the same standard. Now, the second part of this was do we use machine learning methods? And um, I can maybe have, maybe have time to exp uh, explain it a little bit more in depth. So the curation of the data um, at scale is very complex. And Kajin uses various methods whenever appropriate uh, without compromising the position of it. So the process in general of clinically, uh, clinical and phenotypic data curation is very laborious and um, intellectually intensive activity that demands deep subject matter expertise and significant personnel resources. However, uh, it is important to recognize that using the most appropriate method at each step in the curation process is critical for operating at scale and 
being able to curate so much data for more than 1 million variants in HSMD. So, for example, the process of identifying and quickly prioritizing relevant publications for curation is commonly carried out by queries, by querying articles in PubMed. And machine learning is providing a valuable approach to enhance and accelerate this initial prioritization process. Now, using the like natural language and processing and mach machine learning approaches, you can further facilitate certain seeding relationships from articles. However, um, in general, the deeper curation requires to build requires high to, to dig into highly unstructured data like graphics, full text, supplementary materials, and to decipher complex clinical outcomes and phenotypic relationships require human judgment. And therefore, our experts really focus on the human judgment, the human curation to um, um, provide accurate and uh, relevant um, information um, and capture these complex relationships and interactions and even contradictory evidence. So if you would do the last step with machine learning, you would certainly lose position. And uh, the manual curation for Kaijin is still the, the gold standard to capture these complex um, um, relationships. Next question. When will HSMD be available? And is there a way to try it out? Yes, uh, HSMD will be available at the end of this year. Um, a trial can be requested for a limited period of time uh, on our websites. Will you be able to overlay the content with patient data, such as age, for example, to review mutations in pediatric patients? Yeah, that's a good question. So we do have the capabilities to do that. However, this will not be part of the first release. You showed examples of just variants. Does HSMD include fusions or CNVs? Yeah, currently the interface only displays small mutations. However, we do plan to add uh, fusion and copy number content in our next release. All right. Before we conclude, I would like to thank our speaker, Dr. Beata Litzenberger, and most of all, you, our audience, for your attention. We hope this was informative and helpful. However, if you should have any remaining questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. We are here to help you. This concludes today's session on HSMD. We look forward to hosting you in future Kajan Digital Insight webinars. Have a pleasant rest of your day. Thank you.